what I will do here, I will actually summarize uh, all the dark matter related results that we have at the LHC for you. So just as the introduction to what, what you can see here is actually Geneva and uh, Mont Blanc here. Uh, also, you can see the LHC 22nd kilometer ring. And uh, here we have two general purpose detectors, ATLAS and CMS. Uh, that um, analyzed the uh, PP collisions uh, in 2012. We had uh, eight TV center of mass energy. And uh, what uh, the generally we do is actually we uh, measure things uh, uh, we already know. So we want to probe whether the standard model actually works or not. And also we want to find new things. So uh, we all know uh, what the uh, blocks, building blocks of the matter are that we already uh, have in standard model. Also in 2012, we found a particle which could be a good candidate for the last missing piece, which is the Higgs boson. And uh, we are at the moment uh, trying to really see whether this is a Higgs boson or not. Uh, overall, I mean, looking at the summary plot for the uh, standard model, it looks like that uh, uh, there's uh, no excess here. We really see everything perfectly agreeing with the theory. And also we can do uh, self-consistency checks uh, for the standard model where we actually measure the W mass and top mass. And also without these uh, things in, we can actually predict what the top mass and W mass should be from uh, the processes where actually we have loop contributions and we see everything uh, is uh, well in agreement. So standard model is well tested, well constrained, and uh, uh, we don't see any deviations uh, uh, from the theory. So do we really understand everything? And uh, actually within the standard model, uh, things look very promising, but uh, we know actually that uh, we would like to also find the explanation for dark matter. And uh, so we are missing quite a big piece here. And uh, so what is the standard model dark matter connection? I mean, uh, can we really uh, see it uh, at the LHC? Uh, so if we look here, so this is the basically effective field theory uh, contact interaction between standard model and dark matter. And this is what you have already seen here today. So. Uh, uh, the dark matter production is if you go in this direction and in this very simple model we can, uh, as you will see, uh, uh, contribute to the landscape of the results uh, by direct or indirect uh, searches uh, uh, quite nicely. The other option actually, uh, uh, for the, or the other candidate for the um, connection between standard model and dark matter is the Higgs portal dark matter, meaning that we produce Higgs boson and this Higgs boson actually provides uh, the pair of uh, dark matter uh, and anti-dark matter particle. So this is the second case. And finally, it can be that uh, we don't have only one particle uh, missing. It's the whole bunch of particles. And the dark matter is one of them. So for instance, in the supersymmetry, we have uh, uh, such a candidate in the lightest supersymmetric particle. So how can we produce uh, experimentally? What does it mean if we produce the dark matter at LHC? So if you collide the two protons, you can produce pair of uh, dark matter particles, which means you don't see anything in the detector. So this is not a good uh, experimental signature if you want to measure something. So you need something in addition. And it can be initial state radiation of a jet, photon, W, Z, basically anything. And this will actually uh, appear in the detector and it will be balanced by the dark matter on the other side. And you can see such an event display here where you have jet here and something here. In this case, probably two neutrinos, of course. So effective field theory for WIMPs. Uh, so this is what we use uh, to interpret our results at the LHC. Uh, CMS uses uh, this notation, ATLAS uses this notation, so the notation is a bit different, but essentially the thing is the same. And you can see that there is a couple of operators, uh, a vector operator for the spin-independent interpretations, axial vector for the spin-dependent uh, interpretations, and we have also a few more operators uh, depending on the nature uh, of the interaction here. So, First, uh, I would like to talk or summarize uh, the mono something searches we have at the LHC. So this is the, uh, what we have at the moment, the public results uh, by both Atlas and CMS. So this is the monojet analysis, monophoton, 
and CMS also provides the results on mono W. So uh, I would like to talk a bit about the monochat analysis, just uh, to quickly summarize how such a search looks like. So we have a jet which is balanced by the a pair of dark matter particles as a signal, and there are huge backgrounds to this process coming from the standard model. Namely, there is an irreducible background from Z to nu nu plus jets, where you have two neutrinos and a jet, exactly the same signature as you would hope for from the dark matter. And then you have also uh, uh, W to uh, lepton and neutrino plus jets, where actually you miss the lepton. And all this gives you roughly 80% of background. And then you have backgrounds from uh, Z to LL, top quark, QCD, there are non-collision backgrounds, diboson production. So these are all the processes which you have to consider in the search. And then you actually look whether you have some uh, excess over the expectation from the standard model or not. So uh, since the signatures or the, or, or the diagrams for the electroweak processes uh, are very similar, we can actually try to estimate these uh, processes not from the Monte Carlo, but in a data-driven way using the Monte Carlo by taking the ratio between these two processes and uh, detecting uh, events where we actually want this good lepton and a W. So this is what we do here. So you can see the number of, uh, let's say, Z to nu nu in the, our signal region will be basically uh, the data uh, measurement in the control region, which is, let's say, W and E nu, and the ratio of the Monte Carlo processes between Z to nu nu and uh, W E nu, for example. We have several uh, Monte Carlos like this, um, uh, control regions like this. And what you see in this formula is actually is that you have to uh, subtract the backgrounds from your control region. So this is essentially a multi-jet background in the control region. You have to correct for several efficiencies, efficiency of the W reconstruction, efficiency of the lepton reconstruction, uh, trigger efficiency. And then, of course, from theory or from Monte Carlo, you take the uh, ratio between uh, the two processes. So. This is a data-driven way of uh, uh, arriving uh, at the results at the signal region. Data-driven uh, uh, is, of course, preferred over the Monte Carlo because it uh, really uh, cancels out some of the effects uh, that we uh, uh, cannot simulate uh, or are not so sure that we simulate uh, uh, precisely. So we actually push down the systematic errors by doing this. And what you can see here is the result from CMS, and there is basically no, or there is no excess over uh, the Monte Carlo or data-driven predictions. So we have to say that there is no signal found, and at the 95% confidence level, we can actually provide the limits on sigma times cross-section times efficiency. So this is basically what we do. And now we also can interpret these results in terms of, uh, let's say, WIMP contact interactions. So what you can see here, is uh, the limit on the contact interaction scale as a function of WIMP mass. So the limit of this scale are very similar for both vector and axial vector uh, operators, and it's about 1 TV. Then, this is a very similar plot just from ATLAS, but there is something more I want to show you here. So uh, from the WIMP miracle, uh, we know that the thermal relic actually be, uh, uh, can be due to dark matter if uh, uh, the scale for the um, uh, WIMPs is uh, comparable to uh, the weak scale. So this is also what motivates the dark matter searches at the LHC. And also, we can then uh, use this line here, which we draw based on basically this, in this equation, to uh, draw some conclusions about, uh, uh, about uh, um, dark matter results in, at the LHC. Basically meaning if you are above this line, the suppression is too large and you don't have enough, uh, in, uh, enough uh, uh, dark matter uh, to actually make the observed thermal relic. So you will need more operators, uh, not only this one, to, uh, uh, to, to get the uh, observed uh, thermal relic density. Then what we have here is also this bit, the shaded area, which is the effective uh, theory limit. This basically comes from the requirement of staying in the perturbative region, but we have to be more careful here. Really, we have to be more careful because we are using effective theory, and here is the question, what is the validity of the effective theory? So we are basically going from a mediator here to uh, 
an effective uh, theory here. So if you write the propagator uh, in terms of this uh, uh, higher uh, order contribution, so if you want to cancel this higher order contribution or make it negligible, of course, uh, uh, this has to be close to zero. So from this directly, it follows that uh, the matching, uh, that, that lat lambda has to be uh, greater than twice the dark matter mass. And uh, so this is also fine. Uh, this is, of course, fine for the heavy mediator. But if you don't have the heavy mediator, things can become more tricky. And CMS actually did this. Uh, they tried to uh, see what, it, uh, what happens if they take uh, the models with the light mediator. And uh, how would the limit change uh, with these processes, which do not actually uh, take the effective uh, field theory? So you have, again, the limit on lambda as a function of mediator mass this time. And uh, one case is, for, uh, for, one case is uh, for light dark matter, and the other is for uh, heavy dark matter. And what you can actually say here, so if you, draw the, if you remember the plots I showed you before, they say it's a 1 TV limit uh, on, the, uh, on the suppression scale. And uh, basically, this means that if you, are, uh, uh, if you have a heavy mediator, you are fine. If you are here, then our, our results are conservative. And if uh, the mediator is too light, then you have a problem. So roughly above the twice uh, dark matter mass, uh, we are fine. Then we can also uh, translate our limits into the WIMP nuclear gross section and contribute to these plots, which uh, we already saw today. And uh, what you see in particular uh, is uh, that uh, the LHC limits are strong, really strong at the uh, low WIMP mass. And this is because we don't have any uh, limited systematics due to a small recoil energy as the direct uh, searches have. And for the uh, spin dependent, spin dependent uh, results, uh, uh, the results are very competitive uh, in the whole mass range. Then we can also actually put limits on the annihilation cross section and uh, compare, uh, uh, therefore, between LHC and, uh, uh, and the indirect searches. And uh, again, we can indicate the thermal relic uh, uh, line here and uh, see whether the, uh, whether the uh, limits we have actually are fine if you have only one operator or if more operators are needed. Uh, and basically the same things as I was already discussing for the WIMP mass. So the other class of the searches we have at the LHC uh, is uh, the Higgs portal or searches for the invisible decaying Higgs boson. So what you can see here is the production cross-section of uh, Higgs. And what we want to see is actually the invisible decays. So it's times the branching ratio of Higgs to invisible. And uh, this invisible can, of course, be dark matter pair. So this is what we want to measure. And uh, there is, again, a couple of analyses uh, by Atlas and CMS. Uh, so depending on the uh, production channel, it's either the associated Higgs production with the Z boson, or there is a recent result from the vector boson fusion Higgs uh, production. So this is an example of uh, the associated Higgs production. So basically what you have in the final state is the lepton pair from the Z and uh, nothing from the Higgs, because this is the invisible uh, DM pair. And uh, again, there will be uh, backgrounds from dibosons, top, and everything. So what you can see here is uh, the um, agreement between data and standard model background uh, predictions. And uh, based on this, we again can set limits on uh, a branching ratio for Higgs to invisible. So assuming that we have this 125 GV standard model Higgs boson, we can set limits on the branching fraction uh, to invisible. And this analysis actually gives us 65% uh, observed limit on Higgs going to invisible. And also, we can set limits uh, on uh, uh, sigma times branching ratio of Higgs to invisible for a possible additional Higgs-like boson uh, in this uh, uh, given mass range. So what we are actually using is 115 GV up to 300 GV. 
summary of all results is, is, is given here. So uh, Atlas Z, uh, ZH analysis gives currently the strongest limit is 65%. And at a similar level, you can read the other numbers here. So it's 75% from CMS uh, and 69% from the vector boson fusion. We can go even further and actually uh, not only give the number on the Higgs to invisible branching ratio, but we can also try to use these uh, Higgs ports and dark metal models to say more. Uh, unfortunately, currently we don't have these in our papers, but uh, what we could do, uh, for instance, we could take uh, uh, what is in the paper here and uh, uh, use the Lagrangian for uh, Higgs going to uh, the scalar dark matter, vector dark matter, fermionic dark matter, and again, contribute to the plot of uh, uh, the wimp nuclear cross-section against the uh, dark matter mass. And just for the illustration, I'm showing how the curves would look like if we would measure branching ratio of 20%. And finally, if it is not only the Higgs boson, uh, dark matter that is uh, uh, that is uh, uh, new. It, if it is more particles, uh, f in particular SUSI I am actually discussing here, then uh, we can uh, search for uh, longer decay chains uh, with uh, missing ET and the lightest supersymmetric particle here will be our dark uh, matter candidate. So there is a quite variety of different analysis uh, at the LHC going on. Uh, they all uh, set the limit uh, on the mass scale above 1 TV at the moment, and no SUSI signals have been observed so far. So to summarize, so uh, dark matter searches are an important part of the LHC physics program. I was uh, summarizing the mono something searches the invisible Higgs uh, boson analysis, and also I said something about the SUSI searches. So these are all the analyses that, that have some impact on the dark matter searches uh, in general. And uh, the full 2012 data set analysis are almost finalized, or some are still in progress, but uh, we all are close to actually have all the available data analyzed here. We can say that the dark matter has not been found and uh, what I think is the most important here, or personally what I find really uh, um, amazing and surprising is that LHC actually provides complementary result to the direct and indirect dark matter searches. So we are at the same level in terms of sensitivity between LHC and direct and indirect uh, dark matter searches. And this is actually why the results are so complementary and why actually we all started to uh, talking to each other in these times. So the main objective at the moment is, of course, during the shutdown to prepare for the 2015 running at the 13 uh, TV. And of course, we wish that uh, the dark matter is uh, close within the reach of the LHC. Thank you. Uh, I just want to return to the low mass puzzle. So if I understand your plot, uh, the LHC doesn't shed much light on the uh, Low, low mass solution, is that right? Do you mean this plot actually, or? Uh, actually, I didn't see that plot earlier, but you, well, tell us what the LHC says about a low mass WIMP. Well, I think it's in particular, uh, about the low mass, uh, I think the LHC has, uh, uh, this is where actually LHC has the strongest sensitivity. Compared to the other experiments, LHC at, for the low mass uh, dark matter uh, has the strongest limit currently. Of course, assuming uh, that uh, uh, the effective uh, interaction goes via one particular um, operator, and uh, there is plenty of assumptions that go into this plot. I think that Michael has a question okay. or comment. <laughs> yeah, so let's go back to slide 24, because this is, however, a very important point. So. What this slide says, if I understand it correctly, is that the sensitivity that you claim from the effective operator formalism is actually lost if the mediator is below one TeV. And it's something that's, that is the comparison of the blue curve and the red curve, right? And that's actually easy to understand 
because basically what you're looking for is a hard interaction that generates some radiation. If you have a light WIMP candidate which is produced by a light mediator, for example, something that's produced with electroweak interactions for which the mediator is the Z boson, then um, you're off on the left of that curve and you have relatively little sensitivity. Now, that'll come back. In the next run, uh, you'll be able to do much more effective uh, initial state radiation searches, but it's not quite there yet. And so people need to take this into account when they ask whether light mediators are included or excluded. They're excluded, sorry, light dark matter particles. They're excluded if the mediator is heavy above a TeV, but if the mediator is much less than a TeV, we're not yet really sensitive to it. Is that a, did I get this right? Yes, I think so. Okay, thanks. And there is also, I mean, just a few days ago, I saw a nice um, uh, paper on archive about exactly this and trying to reinterpret the plots I'm showing here, taking into account these limitations.